My rap name is 720 God. I come from Earth and I'm a lyricist. There's specific parts of Earth that I come from. Come from London, was born here, come from New York, grew up there. I come from Jamaica. My parents are Jamaican. They grew up in a Jamaican household. I'm from the Bronx, New York. Well, I didn't really come to the UK to pursue the career in music. It was more expanding what we were doing in New York. And that was the, the reason why I was in LA. Um, after I started rapping, I started rapping in Virginia, funny enough, and then I went back to New York and my peoples was rapping. And then the music was just something on top of that. And then I had never come out to the UK before, but I had a UK passport. I was born here, but I ain't have no memory because I left here when I was one. So coming out here was just like another adventure. When it came to the street entrepreneur, it was, I was just trying to find my way in the UK. And I didn't really want to be like fully against the grain. Like, so I made um, some CDs in my friend's house, burned them up. And I used to go to like the urban music festivals and distribute and put up my posters and that. And bumped into my boy D-Roll, who showed me about the West End. And we used to go down there and sell CDs, promote, um, market our material. And the good thing about that, it was, um, it was my own music that I was able to get across to the, the world. Like I made friends from France, friends from Germany, and they would take my music out to those different places. So it just made sense and people were supporting it financially so I could live off of um, what I created. So a lot of people were in the same position where they were just aspiring artists and they didn't have a way to make finance for what they were doing or maybe they wanted to increase their fan base. So they really took to what we were doing as far as going out there and really spearheading our career, like we're gonna meet our fan base directly. So um, my boy, obviously everybody knows my boy Mike GLC came out, linked up with us. We helped them sell a lot of CDs. Um, Triple Darkness, you might have seen Cyrus Malachi out there. You might have seen M9 out there. This is one of my family, you see what I'm saying? D-Raw, um, Daily Grinder, you still see Daily Grinder all over the place. EC, AC, Genesis, Elijah, Terra. Um, you name it. There's so many people out there that are movers and shakers in there. Darker, you see what I'm saying? Um, and we really collectively got the UK scene into a lot of people's homes, into a lot of people's cars, into a lot of people's phones because we were directly marketing just UK music. So we were creating our product, making our songs, writing our songs, recording it, um, getting that onto CD, getting the CD covered and displayed properly, and then going out and then marketing it, marketing it to the public and letting the public know what we were doing. Once we were doing it and it was active and we were making, we were, we were able to survive off it. We just, we didn't hold it to the chest like nobody else can't do this. We told people, come and do this. Like, but well, don't sell drugs, come and do this. So a lot of people, they responded and like, um, you might have seen Darka out there. He's a big name in the scene. You might have seen Cyrus Malachi, M9, those my boys, Iron Braids, um, the Fly Hoonigan goes by now. My fam, Cataclysm, um, Muhammad Yahya, he goes by now. Mike GLC, we clicked up and then helped them sell a whole lot of CDs, you know what I'm saying? So there was a lot of people in the scene that really witnessed and participated in what we were doing and helped us like as a whole collectively because we were just pushing UK music. DJ Amnesty is another one. Um, Midas, Mr. Midas Touch, he's another one. Um, we were collectively pushing UK music into people's hands, into their households, into their cars. So we were just trying to let the scene be 
heard, let ourselves individually be heard, but and um and promote ourselves, build our legacy, build our brands. I could speak about one guy in particular, Daily Grinder, who definitely pushed, pushed, pushed heavily. Cause he didn't make music, he was just marketing who he liked and his friends. So that's why he clicked up. He was marketing us, he was marketing Mike, he was marketing I know he marketed chipmunk, gigs, spray, see what I'm saying? So we was just basically movers. We could move anything. We just chose to market music. Like I said, I didn't want to be controversial. That's why I chose to market the music. And it was really, really um, the response of the public that made me stick with it because the public was the ones that was just like, oh, we'll buy that from you. I don't know who you are, but you say you're an artist, I'll buy that. Oh, what else? And they support our friends and support everybody that was doing what we do doing because they got that we were entrepreneur. They, they, we wasn't just hustling. We wasn't just trying to make money because we could have did that doing anything. They got that we were promoting something. And this was a step in, into a bigger process we, we were creating. And a lot of people took to that. A lot of artists took to that. The industry took to that. Some people in the industry, some people didn't like it one bit. See what I'm saying? Some people thought we were breaking the business. <laughs> we were breaking the music business, but we didn't care. We just needed to do it our way, and nobody was trying to put no cameras in our faces. <laughs> so it was like, boy, we gotta make it happen our own way. We didn't want to be victim of the business, and that was. Uh, that was a strong reason that propelled us to kind of stay independent. Independence was one of the strong um, drivers of, of, of us being out there like every day because we, we didn't want to sign to no label and have them um, skew what we were trying to present to the public. You see what I'm saying? We, we didn't want our message skewed. We wanted to talk whatever we wanted to talk about in our music without being censored by what we felt like labels would do and then be robbed at the same time. So that definitely was one of the, um, one of the drivers behind us staying independent and countering what the um, quote unquote industry um, wanted to portray us as, as a whole, you see what I'm saying? I think that's a lot of reason why we got a lot of fight I mean, even to this day, you see what I'm saying? I, I feel like because of that whole moment, I'm targeted specifically as someone that's blacklisted in the music industry for, for that. I ain't even supposed to be here and living, you see what I'm saying? So I want everyone to live in that way. So however they got their success, I want them to get that. That was the whole point of pushing it, you see what I'm saying? Whether it be for me directly, myself, or someone else, because for me, just being able to experience it all is the is the is where I get my joy directly. Like just being out there hustling with all the group of people is where I got my joy. That's why I could go out there every day because I know I right, my boy's gonna be out there. This boy's gonna be out. We felt like a family. That's why we were able to be more successful because we didn't have the competition amongst ourselves. Even though we were all pushing individual products, like I also mine. Bike had his, D Roy had his, everybody had their own. But it was about the group. So if I made a sale, yo, nah, you ain't leaving. You you gotta help. My boy got another product you need to hear too. So it was about that camaraderie. So it was across the board. So seeing everybody being elevating the the music in the UK as a whole. That's what we want, you see what I'm saying? We don't want to see nobody suffering or struggling, you see what I'm saying? That was the one of the original ideas behind me coming to the UK. Because I had a we got a whole team, Black Mob in the Bronx, you see what I'm saying, that were doing music but kind of really tied into the streets. So I kind of wanted to spearhead that mindset, like, yo, let's switch this off of a more street mentality where we all gonna end up going to jail or dying to let's create a business out of it. So the idea was for me and my brother to come out to London because we both had passports. We just lived in New York. 
and my other brother to go to LA because remember I told you I lived in LA for a while and for the rest of the group to stay in New York and cross network online so um well that it just didn't go according to plan you got different economic things society things that come into play so really I got situated situated here and then I have my son you got credit crunch different dynamics coming came into play where it wasn't like um seamless development and at the same time we didn't have like teachers to teach us we was learning everything from experience so it was like, oh, I made this much money from CDs. What can I do with it? Cool, let's buy some more CDs. Oh, well, you know what? We could do this next. And we would kind of network and learn amongst ourselves. It's kind of the same thing how we grew up in New York. Like, we didn't have parents. Well, we had moms, but we didn't have dads. So when it came to masculinity, we kind of learned it amongst ourselves. You see what I'm saying? So here we were learning the music business amongst ourselves and developing. Because we didn't want to be the same as what the music business was. So when it came to like jumping on a plane, it's only now that situation is really arising where I can jump on a plane and kind of replicate or emulate what I'm doing here in different places because it's, it's really transferable. So yeah, but at that time, it just wasn't doable with all the, the, the economic stuff, family stuff happening and then an experience at the same time. I, I wouldn't recreate my history, you see what I'm saying? I'll keep the history the same exact way it, it went because I learned the lessons that made me who I am today. But if I could um, make little tweaks here and there in the perfect world simulation, I know I could probably have gotten to different things quicker had I had the experience, but that's the point of getting experience. You only get experience through going through things. So. I can't change what I, my history. I, lo I love it how it was. You see what I'm saying? With most of the majority of my songs that I have a point that I'm conveying to the listener. You see what I'm saying? So it's never, I try not to, I try to stay away from the party and bullshit rap. I know that's the thing. Some people are good at it, but I try to really um, be a bit more poetic with what I want to say. My experience just made it so that party and bullshit, this was a bit boring to me. So going out and having real world experiences, like riding a bike and falling over, is my most recent injury. Um, y'all might have seen me on stage with a couple of injuries. Y'all might hear me in my tracks. I'm always talking about I'm breaking my phones because I live in the real world. I don't live like online on the internet. I go outside and I put my bare feet in the grass. You see what I'm saying? I run with the dogs. You see what I'm saying? I like touching people, talking to people, as you see from the street team. And I like being engaging and having a real world experience, one-to-one -one with real people. And that gives me so much information in return that is priceless for me. You see what I'm saying? So. When we were selling CDs on the streets, we used to have a lot of issues with the police, but it wasn't with the individual police workers that used to walk the beat. They used to always tell us it was coming from upstairs, it was coming, and it was coming from upstairs because um, we had our pictures in the train stations. I used to walk on Oxford Street and the cameras used to circulate. And it was just because um, from the information that we got was that we, weren't representing what they wanted to represent in their shopping area. You see what I'm saying? We were out there, we had our hoodies on, we had baggy jeans, see what I'm saying? And talking slang and like in front of um, Selfridges, like they don't really want that. <laughs> see what I'm saying? Um, we were selling CDs in front of HMV, HMV don't really want that. So we had a lot of different issues with the police moving us along and not wanting us to be there. You had some police officers that took it on their head, like they're the, it's their own vendetta. Apparently they had teams set up specifically for the CD sellers in the West End and across the country. But it was just a minor issue. It was a, a like a licensing issue, but we didn't really care about that licensing stuff to be real because we had to 
survive. <laughs> and if it was eat or don't eat, I'ma sell a CD, period. Especially if they couldn't really, like, man, they didn't really know what to do with it at all. That's why if you knew what you were doing, you would get arrested and then they would let you out with all of your stuff that they arrested you with. So for me, I would always get arrested and I knew they were going to let me out and I would go back and they arrest me again and, they, and then let me out because I knew what I was doing and I knew how to do it. Some people um, they didn't have that um, knowledge, but they had problems. But basically the police, they just, they didn't like large groups of us being out there. You see what I'm saying? It was akin to a gang being out there. You see what I'm saying? And that's the way they saw it until they had conversations with us. But then there was the money issue, tax issue. There was a whole lot of different issues that um, police and governing bodies had as a whole. In regards to music, what I want to say to people is just, just keep being your authentic self. And if you feel like you got a creative spirit and you make good music or whatever creation that you got, keep refining it and keep challenging yourself to see how far you can take it. And don't compare yourself to anything you see anywhere else. I got some new material about to drop probably by the end of the year. I got the 720 God EP out now, dropped in February. Um, a lot of um, heartfelt songs on there. Um, if you could go on my YouTube and you can watch my mixtape on there. I got a couple mixtapes on there that you could watch. Yeah, you could um, find me online on Instagram at 720guard underscore black mob. I'm active on there. You can send me messages because, I, like I said, I like the direct interaction. So definitely hit me up on Instagram or hit me up on YouTube. Same, same at 720guard underscore black mob and drop me a line.